Hi, this is Tony Hackett. Besides publishing my conversations with startup founders, I'm now narrating articles from my B2B digital twin website. This website offers my unique take on the emerging trend of digital twins for business, allowing for digital social selling content creation for business executives. My work on this platform has been gratifying, allowing me to explore the potential of digital twins for business-to-business sellers in particular. Let's now move on to today's narrated article. I'd like to start with an acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet. Here in Sydney, it's the Gadigal people. We pay respect to elders past, present and emerging and extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people attending today driving sales growth with a B2B social selling factory. By combining the power of social media with the rigour of strategic selling, you enable new employees and upskill existing team members to succeed in a work-from-home environment. Creating a B2B social selling factory provides a modern hybrid process to help build contacts and increase pipeline. This process's benefits will flow to the customer engagement and business development activities. Companies increasingly recognise the potential of leveraging social media channels to establish long-term relationships and drive growth. Sales organisations know the promise of social channels in B2B markets. The need to build social tool proficiency into sales teams' practices is a familiar message. But the hurdle to achieving this change is with successful sellers who have not needed to leverage social media. Maintaining existing strategic selling habits holds a convincing argument when nothing changes in the seller's environment, including remote working and work-from-home impacts on buyers and sellers, and you now face a dilemma. But how do we keep the rigour of team communication and strategic selling practices in place while benefiting from the best social can offer? Next, create a prospecting factory. You will do this by keeping your existing sales processes and merging them with your selection of social channels. The factory foundations. Number one, context. What is the target company's market position versus their peers? Number two, relationships. Who are the critical prospects by name or role you need to influence? Number three, value. How do you communicate with your prospects in language that matters to them, their leaders and customers? Number four, relevance. Understanding the existing relationships, contracts and strategic value of competitors, it becomes clear where your unique value lands. And number five, partnerships. If your value and relevance mapping identifies an opportunity, but your company doesn't fully cover it, choose a partner based on your gap coverage. This information can come from multiple channels and sources and equip the seller to access the identified people. The social selling aspect of the factory will allow you to generate a multi-touch prospecting campaign that will use channels such as LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook, but not to the exclusion of email. A final consideration is the use of video. Not broadcast on YouTube, but personalised 60 to 90 sec creations that specify the pitch as produced by your factory. Precise and current, with relevance to the person you are trying to access and sent to them alone. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Feedback is always welcome. And I would appreciate introductions to potential future guests to invite onto the podcast. But that's it for today. Thanks for listening and bye for now.